no clap, whoop, holler for Willie and Thompson! Hello London, how are we doing? <laughs> very good, very good. I'm over here from Belfast. Uh, yeah, it's lovely to be here. I'm aware my disability uh, isn't visible uh, straight away. I do know that. Um, sir, what's your name? Richard, what do you think my disability is? Get the... <laughs> no, no pressure at all, camera full on, Richard. <laughs> no idea. No idea, good man. No, I have... I I have cerebral palsy, Richard. That, that's my uh, disability. In Belfast, they're a lot harsher crowd. Because Richard was very awkward there. He's like, oh, I don't want to say. I did that in Belfast two weeks ago. I came out and went, well, guys, what do you think my disability is? Guy in the front row, straight away, Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't blame people for not knowing what my disability is or knowing that I'm disabled. I didn't know I was disabled until I was 13. My parents never told me. They were just like, oh, give this kid a ball and watch him kick it. This will be funny, right? <laughs> Genuinely, right? <laughs> and, then I was, and then I was going to big school. I was going to secondary school. And they were like, oh, we need to tell him. He can't go thinking that he's not disabled. Like, I still believed in Santa. Same energy. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I came downstairs on my 13th birthday, and my parents handed me a letter explaining I was disabled. Right? It was like a depressing Harry Potter. <laughs> But I didn't get a wand and an owl. I got a reel to help me out of the fucking bath. <laughs> That's what I got. It's hard growing up where I grew up. I grew up in the working class estate in Belfast, right? And all my dis when my cerebral palsy, all it really is, is when I'm tired, my muscles contract and I walk with a limp like that, right? That's what my disability is. But when you grow up on a working class estate in Belfast and you're walking with a limp, People do just assume your legs have been broken for stealing cars. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be walking home, carrying the shopping like this, and old ladies will walk past me, like, serves you right, you thieving wee bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get bait for nothing. Britain's a particularly difficult country to be disabled in, I would say, right? Because we're not a very sympathetic people. Our whole, uh, our whole nation is just like, oh, we all have our own problems. You deal with it, right? We don't really feel bad for each other. Like, you go to America, you say you're disabled, and they're like, oh my God, you're disabled? I had no idea. I had no idea. You're wonderful. <laughs> you are brave. You're not disabled. You're differently abled. <laughs> Okay, you can do anything that you want to do, and I'm rooting for you, slugger. Go get him! <laughs> and you come back to sunny Britain, right? <laughs> and you say to someone you're disabled, and the only response you'll get is, disabled, I. <laughs> get a wee bit of money for that, do you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm disabled too, mate, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Ireland's not a bad place to be disabled because we have a unique situation where as if your mobility is badly affected, you get a car. It's a really weird situation. It's like the government's going, sorry about the brain damage. There's a Vauxhall Astra. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I said this to one of my friends and he went, oh, you're so lucky. I wish I had cerebral palsy. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, sir? <laughs> he went, no, but like if I had a car like that, like I'd get a really nice girlfriend. I was like, so you're telling me, right, that you would take all the years of physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, all the years of medication, all the years of pain, the anxiety of being laughed at whenever you play sport, or when you try to do something your disability won't let you do, and you take all that on just so you could get a car? Then I saw what he was driving, and I thought, <laughs> I was like, cerebral palsy's fucking class. <laughs> I see your issue, sir. I wouldn't finger myself in that car. That's... <laughs> I'm single. I don't do well with dating. I, I'm, really, I'm really bad at being single because I'm not good at like one night stands. And the reason for that being is I'm not good at the dirty talk. You into it, Richard, yourself? <laughs> 
Yeah. You like it better than dirty talk? Good mom, good mom, Richard. <laughs> you considered that for a second and I went, you know what? I up there, up there, up there. <laughs> and I only found out I was bad at dirty talk recently, right? Because I went on a Tinder date and we went back to this girl's house and we ended up, you know, fully shagging, right? <laughs> And she was on top, because uh, I'm a gentleman and I'm lazy. Uh, she was like, get on top. I'm like, I can't, they'll take my car. Don't, like, just. <laughs> <laughs> and she said during that, the dirtiest thing that I've ever heard said to me, right? And I apologize for this, Richard. But she, <laughs> during sexual intercourse, she looked me in the eyes and she did this. She went, William, I want you to fill me up. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Fill me up. I didn't know if she wanted spunk or a tenor of unleaded. Ladies <laughs> <laughs> and gentlemen, Willie Thompson, thank you.